Ben, what are, what are you doing? So well, we're going to have to put off breakfast this morning, Dad. And why is that? Because I got to get this furniture rearranged mm -hmm. to better center this energy in this room. What are you talking about, Ben? You know, I've been reading up on feng shui. Yeah, I saw the book out. The whole idea here is to get this kitchen reordered to where it would be better suitable for spiritual energy. I'm going to need you to move over a little bit to the left yeah. here. Can't we do this in a little while, Ben? The first step to total enlightenment is uh, furniture rearrangement. That's what this feng shui stuff is all about. Well, that that's just some guy trying to sell you some furniture. I, I sense you're reluctant to get into no, this. No, I just would like a cup of coffee is what I'm reluctant. Well, I'm much more interested in Eastern and Western philosophy after my after first cup, cup of coffee. Because for me, that is when life begins. Maybe you should uh, wait in the other room. I'll get this together and then uh, I'll okay, make it. I'm just going to grab a cup of... Where's the, where is the coffee? Well, the percolator's in the refrigerator now. What I needed to do was to get the uh, the toaster and some of the pots and pans more relatable to the refrigerator. Because they're not hitting it off? Well, their energy was not good. Right. And I would love to take the shelving down. And, you know, I, I'm excited that you've found something you can cling to. Well, I just know, think just... I've tapped into something that's, you know, more meaningful. I just wish it wasn't such a trendy thing, this feng shui thing, you know? Well, it's not necessarily trendy. It's been around for, uh, like, over three years. No, this book was published in 1987. No, I know it's based on ancient... And um, the just chi that... Chinese culture goes back uh, hundreds of years. No, Ben, it goes back much further. You know, uh, Dad, there's a lot about qi in this book. What is qi again? Remind me. It says qi is a uh, cosmic breath. Yeah. Speaking of cosmic breath, Dad. <laughs> a mint? <laughs> brush your cosmic teeth. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm kind of nervous. This is my first time at a marriage counselor. I couldn't get my wife to come with me, so I guess uh, huh, I'll just tell you what's up. Okay. I've been married about a year and a half. Right. And I have to say, just the marriage process alone was terrifying to me. Uh, things like the bridal registry. Which is? This is where you go into a department store and basically sign up for the things you want your friends to buy for you. I find that creepy. It's a very polite, socially acceptable way of saying, we love you, we want you to come to our wedding and celebrate our day, but we don't trust your crappy taste. Therefore, please peruse this 25-page computer printout from the Pottery Barn. Item 2472Z might make a good choice in green. So the, so the wedding itself is over. How is the marriage going? My wife has been bugging me and bugging me and bugging me to get a second cat. She is terrified that the first cat is going to become jealous of the baby and somehow kill it. So she wants to get a second cat to distract our first cat from killing the baby. Yeah. Maybe I just have a more cynical worldview. I think this would just provide our first cat with an evil henchman. Okay, you distract the two humans, I'll kill the baby. What do you mean distract them? You gotta be more specific. What do you mean distract them? You know, you can spray. Believe me, they'll go running. I will get the child. I love having a baby. Yeah. What I am looking forward to is when my child goes through the cape phase. That is going to be so cute where they have to wear a cape, usually a bath towel around their shoulders, and they wear it everywhere, and they're wearing a cape. They're Batman. You know, I, I went through a big cape phase. There are pages and pages of my family photo album where I've got the cape on. Mm -hmm. And that's where parents have to be their most understanding. I remember an uncle of mine had died. Yeah. And I wanted to wear my cape to the funeral. Why not? Why wouldn't you wear a cape to a funeral? And I remember my mother being so understanding and saying, well, you know, Uncle Ed has passed away and he's gone up to heaven and people are going to be very sad, okay? They're going to be crying, okay? We have a word called inappropriate. I think it would be inappropriate for you to wear the superhero cape to Uncle Ed's funeral. And that doesn't fly with that. That's not kid logic, you know? So I just exploded at her. Mom, I am 16 years old. Don't tell me what I can and cannot wear to a funeral. I'm trying to find out who the hell I am, okay? If you need to talk to me, I will be in the Batcave, a.k.a. my room. Dr. Katz's office. Hi, Laura. It's Ben. How you doing? Okay, bye. Wait, wait, wait. I know this might uh, surprise you, but uh, I'm very into feng shui. Oh, really? Me too, actually. Really? Uh-huh. You, you know what it is? Yeah. I said feng shui. Maybe you thought I was saying something in English, but it's a Chinese thing. I know. It's an Eastern. I philosophy. know. So you know about that it involves 
just furniture mm-hmm. and moving objects in mm-hmm. order to uh, maximize your tranquility. Mm-hmm. Did you know about the contentment stuff and the uh, yin yang? Do you know that? Mm-hmm. Have you heard of um, Mao Tse Tung? What? Mao Tse Tung. He's a Chinese leader. Huh. Yeah. I knew about him too. He's in the book. Hmm. So if you know Feng Shui, you must know about Ling Tang. Did you just make that up? Yeah. <sighs> but honestly, you strike me as someone much more Western than Eastern. You know? Really? What about your apartment? Do you have your apartment set up like that? Mm hmm. You do? Yeah. Why don't you come over and check it out? Because, um,. I could tell you what, uh, what maybe what you did wrong. Or I don't think it'd be a good idea, Ben. No. Yeah. I think that it would disturb my tranquility. Well, listen, I am uh, getting a, uh, together a uh, feng shui study group tonight at uh, my place at uh, 8 o'clock. I don't know if you want to come by and we can exchange some... Uh, mm, I don't think so. ...some ideas and maybe meditate. Do you do origami? That's Japanese. Chinese checkers? No. Just checkers? No. You ever play Bloody Knuckles? I gotta go. Dad. Yes. It's Ben. Lay it on me. I bought some stuff today for the apartment. Hey, that's... I bought a beautiful center table, uh-huh. which I think is going to really fix the living room space. I didn't notice th- there was anything wrong with the living room well, space. Well, you know what happened was the, the table yeah. that we have... Right. It was too high, mm-hmm. and then was cutting off energy. You mean the antique wooden table in our... In our... Was that grandma's? Yeah. That's gone. Okay. I bought some uh, wind chimes and two flutes. Why just two flutes? Well, because uh, in the book... Apparently mm-hmm. two crossing flutes signifies prosperity, I think. Yeah. Also, I bought a... Uh, one of those uh, fake fountains. You plug it in, and the water runs constantly. A urinal. But I just found a urinal. Hey, have you been talking to Laura about this, Ben? Because uh, I spoke to Laura about it, and Laura knew exactly what uh, feng shui was. Feng shui. Feng shui. I can't believe I'm correcting your pronunciation of this thing I don't even yeah, know that, about. You know what? I'll tell you something. You yeah. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it. It's yeah. if you believe in it. Oh, I believe. Then it then it's going to work for you. I believe to the tune of about a thousand bucks at this point. Well, you know, I have not racked up that much money. Well, the day is young. Well, I'm on chapter two. There's 34 chapters left. Yeah. This place is going to be way different. Um, Dad, I'll tell you something. This stuff is so powerful. This could change my life forever. Yeah. You know, just by moving a couple of pieces of furniture, I could be uh, much more spiritual. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I, already, I broke a table. I already felt better. Maybe that's not really feng, feng shui, though. But that's just the pleasure in breaking stuff. Yeah. I have that. How are you, Harry? I, you know, I, I woke up with this really um, feeling of being afraid. Mm-hmm. Is that a good thing? Well, whatever gets you out of bed. Well, I wasn't afraid of bed. Yeah. Let's come back to the dream because I think that's worth exploring. Yeah. Um, Have you spent much time in therapy? Uh, I I had six years of uh, a different form of analysis. Yeah. How would you characterize that? My uh, my analyst, he was more um, verbal than uh, a lot of analysts. But I mean, I shouldn't, you know, th- then there's, you, you you listen to people on the radio and, and those therapists sound very verbal. So I don't know, I guess there's a middle. You don't do radio. No, I don't. And they're in show business. They they are often abusive to the people who call in. I've noticed that. Yeah. But you have a, I mean, you have a show business side too. I've seen your act. Uh, are you talking about Compliment and Cats? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've seen that band. Well, Harry, that was 20 years ago. I mean, we were not, uh, we didn't really know what we were doing. Well, I mean, but I, that was good. That was, I, I, I'm not, you know, folk is not my favorite genre exactly, but I thought that you sort of escaped the limits of the genre. Yeah. What are you, uh, what are you saying? Well, it's limiting because it, it, any sign of craft is suspect. Yes. Yes. And, you know, what you brought to it was a sense of craft so that there was a, a faux kind of craftlessness that masked the craft. Well, we <clears throat> we used um, craft maskers, which helped. But I mean, do you get, do you get? Well, anyway, we should be. <laughs> this is so uh, inappropriate of me to let you. No, I know. I'm. I'm. I. So should we go? I mean, yeah. So the dream was was like scary, but um, but I'm not scared. See, that's right. That's what. Let what... me ask you this, Harry. The first time you saw a couple of cats. 
When was that exactly? And uh, what were you feeling? You know, I, I'm a little embarrassed that you that you know about the existence of the band. Oh, believe me, it's embarrassing for me because I have this feeling that any existence of you outside this room is is embarrassing to me. Yeah. You know, I have this fantasy that you stop existing when I leave the room. Well, traditionally, I shouldn't really exist in your mind outside of this room. But it's difficult, Harry, when you achieve a certain amount of notoriety to maintain a low profile. Are you talking about me? No, actually, I was talking about me. Oh. See, I think th I think that the, my problem is that I'm uh, th that respect that we were talking about. Yeah. That's why I got into show business, and I don't think you can get respect for being in show business. Well, uh, see, I I disagree. I think I have an enormous amount of respect for anybody who makes their living in show business. It's such a competitive. Didn't you guys do a song that sort of sounded like respect? Yeah, we did. I think I know the I think I know the song you're you're talking about. That's so uh, astute of you because not not many people picked up on that. Well, when you spelled out, I don't. What was the word you were spelling out? Respectful. That well, yeah. Geez, you no one has ever noticed the similarity between that and respect. Huh? That's probably just out of courtesy. Good manners is so important. Listen to this, Dad. Huh? Dad? Wind chime? Mm-hmm. I bought a lot of wind chimes. But you know, we don't really have anywhere to put them outside, so I hung them inside. Well, open the window a crack. No, no, I, I bought some fans. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, uh, yeah. it's total contentment. It's all about enlightenment right now. You know, the kind of enlightenment we can afford on your budget yeah. is fluorescent <laughs> enlightenment. Because <laughs> those things last forever. When you come home tonight, mm -hmm. you're going to feel a palpable change in your chi. You don't know what chi is, do you? I know exactly what chi is. You explained it to me this morning. It's my essence. That's right. And my essence is going to kick your essence's ass when I get home. Hi, Laura. Hi, Ben. Let me uh, greet you in the way that I now greet people. You dropped sweat on my desk. Yeah. You know, Laura, to the fool, life is a series of unrelated events, you know, unresolved gestures, unrequited love. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just regurgitating that book all the time now. But I'm really, I'm getting into the, uh, to the fang of the shui. I see you uh, change the office around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Move the coat rack. That should be over a little more. No. Don't you think? I don't think so. You know, it's funny how people's ideas of feng shui are different, you know? Feng shui. It's funny how the people, the way they say it is different, too, sometimes. Yeah, like the right way or the wrong way. Right, and it's feng shui. Depending on, you know. In any respect, I just get the feeling that some people's uh, ideas of feng shui are better than others, and mine is better. Ben, it's not a competition. Well, I did the apartment over. Have you done your apartment? Yeah. Do you have a lot of plants? Yeah. You have a fishbowl? No. Huh, I do. <laughs> yeah. Where is it? It's in the kitchen right next to the toaster where it belongs. Uh. Do you have wind chimes in your apartment? No. <laughs> I, I, I have a whole bunch of wind chimes. Do you have uh, crystal balls? No. I don't have those either. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's dumb. That's like too new age. Mm-hmm. Which way is your bed facing? It's facing east. Dumb. <laughs> so obvious. Are you keeping track of the score? Pff, I won. I did. I'm better. I am. I'm more at peace with myself than you'll ever be at peace with yourself. I'm so much at peace that I'm about to fall asleep. I'm doubly as at peace. You're getting upset. Takes one to know one, way more tranquil. Totally content. When I was a young buck, a young swinger in my 20s, I didn't understand why people would get married. Why would you shackle yourself to another human being with no possibility of escape for the rest of your born days? Yeah. And then I got married in, uh, just a year and a half ago, and after I'd been married six months, I fell down and broke both of my arms. That's why people get married. Right there. For I, I had hoped to go another 70, 80 years at least without ever having to utter the sentence, Honey, I'm done. Wipe me. Because I don't care how cool your roommate is, most of them won't go there. Come on, dude, just wipe me. I've got bro broke both my arms. Come on, get all mad. Come on, wipe me. Dude, you suck. I hate you. 
And my wife, the sweetest woman in the world, actually said this to put me at ease. You know, I just say, honey, I'm so embarrassed. This is so weird. I'm so sorry. I, mean, I guess you can file this under for worse. Huh? Mm -hmm. She actually said to me, tell you what, after your casts come off, you can wipe my butt. Well, let's not go off the deep end, honey. This isn't about me being jealous that you get to wipe my butt and I don't get to wipe your butt. It's, it's not like I'm sitting there going, man, some people have all the luck. Yeah. That is the kind of thing that can be pulled out as a trump card to end any and all future arguments. Yeah, well, honey, I don't think you're respecting my needs. Yeah? Well, what about the time I wiped your butt for four weeks after you fell down and broke both your arms, you clumsy elf? All right. Enjoy the Caribbean with your male friends. Ben was telling me, and this has to do with this feng shui stuff, that hey, when hey, you hey. got... What'd you say? Feng shui. Feng shui. <laughs> hey, feng shui this, okay, pal? Feng shui. Is it He's helping? doing it, you know, and actually, uh, See more I'll tell you who else is into it is, is, is Laura. Really? <sighs> well, this could have a positive social benefit. In other words, you think he's going to get chicks out of this? Well, maybe it's... Uh... What do you do? You just rearrange the furniture? Is that what you're doing with this? Well, if it was that simple, well, they wouldn't call it feng shui. Does it involve like a, a sort of a tantric sexual type of thing? I don't think so. What, that? Is that, what does that mean, a tantric? Tantric sex, that's when you, uh, you, you, you do it over long stretches of time. And uh, sleep is involved at times and uh, maybe a sandwich. You're right. But I, I come home from work and Ben says to me, Dad, do you know that we're all blind men touching different parts of the same elephant? Wow. What the hell did he mean by that? It's interesting. It's, it's interesting way to look at things is that we none of us know what life is about, and but somehow we're all connected. But yeah. somehow the experience is, is like Julie said, we're all connected. Nice. But the thing that connects us that I didn't realize was this big elephant. Boy, <laughs> well, it it, it, it works because we're all dealt different hands in life, you know. Boy, is that true? Did he say which part of the elephant he was a touching? No, but but ever since he read that he washes his hands like twenty times a day. <laughs> God. <laughs> Dad, you hold both in one hand, not... I have never been able to master the chopstick, Ben, and I'm sick of apologizing for it. I'll tell you something. I was thinking more in terms of when we were going to have an Eastern breakfast that you wouldn't have served me Rice Krispies. Oh, you might have more, like, more a... like just a bowl of rice. Yeah. Honestly, though, Dad, I think that... Uh, yeah. Well, you read a book like this and you start, you know, thinking more about things spiritual. I do think about what happens to us after we die because I, don't, I can't believe that this is it. No. Yeah. I know, Ben, that my body is not who I am. Right. But if you're looking for me, right. I'm over here. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. You know, Dad, I was thinking right. about this feng shui stuff. Right. That you're probably right about. You can't make radical changes in your philosophy. Right. I mean, there was a reason why I, you know, there's, I have a particular uh, type of um, mindset. I, well, no, I just, um, that, you know, I grew up as, I can't. Think with these things! I don't know if this is the, the uh, time to bring this up, but um, my goddaughter's birthday is coming up. Mazel tov. Thank you. And um, I was wondering if you think that giving her uh, learning to tie your inner shoe is an appropriate gift for a nine-year-old. I think that's the perfect gift. I think she's just the right age. Hmm. And I would be delighted to sign one. Well, you don't have to do that. Would mean probably mean a lot to her someday. The book, a signed copy. Of oh, a signed copy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've been in show business a long time, and I feel almost ashamed to still be surprised by the idea that people's public personas are are so radically different from who they really are. Yeah. Whereas I feel like, well, I don't, I, I don't have a public persona. Maybe that's my problem. I mean, if you had to describe me based on my public persona, what would you say? I would say that you are, um... See? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just what, that's just the first thing that popped into my no, head. No, I, I know. That's the problem. I think, I think it's because you're, you, what you do is so unique that it, that it's so hard to describe. Um, but we're just talking about persona. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have one. I haven't done my homework. I apologize. Well, no, no, wait. Wait, don't put yourself down because... In The Mean No One Knows, you talk about the concept of reverse transference, don't you? 
I, I broached the subject. I, I don't remember whether I go into it in depth. Well, you could broach it now. Well, reverse transference is, uh, well, you're familiar with transference. Mm-hmm. It's where I love you. That's right. Well, I think, you know, my affection for you is what they call reverse transference. Really? Yeah. Mm. Which is different than I'm rubber, your glue. Sometimes I feel that I'm not made for this century. You know, mm -hmm. it's such a such a nasty time where every people get mad so easy. You know, a light turns green and it's instantly mad. Everybody goes from like zero to like 70 on the anger meter in the snap of a finger. Mm -hmm. I wish I could go back like a century. Go back to like Charles Dickens times, you know, the 19th century where the worst thing you could say to anybody is, good day, sir. That was the worst. Some guy gets in your face and starts giving you a hard time. Hey, you cut me off at that red light. What are you trying to do, pal? Where'd you get your license? You just give him that look and you say, good day, sir. What? Hey, I'm not through with you yet. I want, I said good day. Hey, you know what that means. I know what it means. Our time is up. Ha <laughs> ha.